Today's subject is the MIT, which stands for Macular Integrity Tester, sometimes known as a Hedinger brush device. It takes advantage of a phenomenon that occurs only in the macula. Because the macula has yellow pigment in it, when we rotate a Polaroid through a blue or cobalt blue filter, we get what is called a Hedinger brush. which basically looks like a brush or a propeller that spins around the fovea. The fovea, of course, is the center of the vision and what we're trying to teach the patient to use. Often in amblyopia or lazy eye, we'll get something called eccentric fixation. This device is used to both test for and train eccentric fixation. Your MIT comes very disassembled and that's so it's packed and shipped safely so that things don't get broke. Uh, one of the first things you want to do, of course, is put your light bulb. We now use an LED light bulb. We put that into the assembly and put this here so that our light source is ready to go. You want to unpack the MIT motor and rotating Polaroid assembly. These are just thumb screws that um, you have to put in there that are um, used to tighten it on here. And it just sits on here like so. You're going to want it at a slight angle that matches the angles of the MIT and you adjust this for the height of the patient. Once you have that assembled, we're gonna come over here to your power supply and grab this cable. Notice these, this cable is the same on both ends, so it doesn't matter which end you put in which device. There's a RCA-like plug on the back. It just simply goes in there. Make sure you get it all the way in so it's snug. If you only have it part way in, it's not gonna make a good connection. You won't get a power to your device, so make sure it's in there firm. And then, of course, the other end goes to the back of this. Flip on your device. You'll see the red power light come on. And then this is the control knob. This knob controls not only the speed of the device, but also the direction. If you turn the knob clockwise, the motor on the MIT turns clockwise. You want to have this set at about the two to three o'clock position at about this speed. If you have it going too fast, the brush and propeller spin so fast, it's sometimes difficult to see. Too slow, it doesn't give you the effect you want. So right about in there. To test the responses of the patient, sometimes they'll tell you they're seeing the brush when they're really not. First of all, you can show them with the good eye what they're looking for so they know what they're looking for. Secondly, when you get to the eccentric fixating eye, you want to make sure that they're seeing it spinning in the clockwise direction. To test their honesty, you can turn it and now it's rotating clockwise. You simply ask them which direction is the brush turning. If you want to hide it from their view, just turn it sideways so they can't see what you're doing with the knob itself. But that's the basic assembly. Once you've got these things functioning like this, you want to have them at approximately 68 inches apart. The brighter the light is, the closer it is, the easier it is to see the brush. But with this new device, the brush is very easy to see, at least five times easier than the original device. You can have it back and give yourself some, some working space. The cobalt blue filter usually is put here. You'll see in some of the later things we do, we actually will move it to the back of the MIT device. It is not intended and should never go in front of the Polaroid. You barely see the brush this way and hopefully they'll distinctly see the brush cobalt blue filters behind. The purpose of the MIT and the Hedinger brush is to mark the fovea of the eye, usually the amblyopic eye. The propeller will spin around the center of the macula or the fovea. That's true regardless of which part of their eye they're looking at. So if we take the standard card, put it in front, and we want to isolate only on the center dot, you can use these apertures to control what is seen, but you should see one black dot there. When they're looking at that dot, if they have normal fixation, when they're looking at the dot, the propeller will be spinning around the dot. If they have eccentric fixation, they'll be looking at the dot with the eccentric point, but the propeller or the Hedinger brush will be spinning around the fovea. Therefore, it will be offset or won't be spinning around that dot. You need to note in what direction the propeller is from the dot and how far away that is. The way we treat with this, we'll use 
use a red pointer to put in the equal opposite direction of the propeller and then move this red pointer such that when they're looking at the pointer we've got the propeller spinning around the dot. The therapy consists of moving the pointer closer and closer to the dot while trying to keep the propeller spinning on the dot. At the point the propeller leaves the dot we go back get the propeller back on there and so on. The purpose of the aperture is to concentrate on just one dot. You'll see if we use different size apertures, we're exposing different numbers of dots. Eventually, when we get normal fixation, we want the patient moving from dot to dot, getting the propeller to spin around that each time. We're not going to cover so much how the uh, MIT is used. There's hours and hours worth of courses on MIT therapy, but we want to show you some of the unique properties of this device. Once the patient gets very good at moving from dot to dot and getting the propeller around it, you want to create it more difficult. You want to make it a tougher task. One of the ways we do that is by making this portable and we'll become dynamic. We'll stand up, we'll move from dot to dot and place to play. To do that, simply remove the cobalt blue filter from the light source and put it on the back. We'll get rid of this target for a moment and we'll put a flashlight behind it. Notice the flashlight's very bright with a black dot in the center. You're going to move this behind the MIT, have them look at the black dot, get the propeller spinning around it, and then move it from side to side, have them track, have them follow the light. Make it even more dynamic, even more difficult. We're going to remove this from the stand and put a handle on the bottom of it. Simply screws in there. And then we'll hand hold this like so. You'll see the propeller spinning around the black dot. We can move both the flashlight in different positions, Z's, figure eights, and so on. And then we can start moving this. We can have the patient stand. We can have the patient on a balance board. We can have, it, have them look at very different positions around the room. One can even set up multiple light sources and have them look at those across the room, but they have to be very bright light sources to work. But that's the basic assembly and use of the MIT. For further instructions, um, there's a lot of uh, books written on this subject, and I would suggest you reference those.